As they say in the real estate business, location, location, location. And when trying to find the best spot for a vertical garden, choosing an area with plenty of direct sunlight is always better. But to actually secure that spot in a small backyard may need very good negotiating skills. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hydro Garden channel. As you would expect, I wanted to secure the best possible area for my vertical food garden. But that is exactly the spot where the clothesline was. To be able to secure that area, I had to use my best negotiating skills. First, I promised that I would build a new clothesline before removing the old one. I also blocked the view of the rainwater tank. I knew that would sweeten the deal. After I kept my promise, I was finally able to secure the best spot in the backyard for my vertical garden. I knew that the extra sunlight would give my future vertical garden the best chance of success. The first step in building the frame was to select the timber post. I chose post of treated pine of 9 by 9 centimeters or 3.5 by 3.5 inches. I wanted to make sure the frame would be strong enough for the weight of all the pots, the soil and the plants that would need to be supported by the structure. Initially, I didn't think the color for the frame was really important. I thought that as long as the frame was green, it didn't really matter what type of green. But the more I painted, the more I realized that I should have been more careful when selecting the color. The paint did not look good at all. And later, I was forced to repaint. The location of the vertical garden is of course more important than the color. Initially, I wanted to build the frame very close to the fence, but then I decided to leave a gap of 50 centimeters or about uh, 20 inches between the fence and the vertical garden frame. I knew that later I was going to carry out some work behind the frame, so 50 centimeters was just enough to let me do that. Also, I knew that eventually I would have to replace our timber fence, so if I didn't leave enough room for that, I would be forced to remove my vertical garden later. And that, of course, was the last thing in my mind. The second step was to make holes deep enough to secure the structure in the ground. I decided that the holes should be 80 centimeters or nearly 32 inches deep. I felt that that would be good enough for the job. What I didn't know was how hard it was going to be to actually achieve that. I was so relieved when I finally reached the 80 centimeter mark. And just when I was ready to celebrate my accomplishment, I remembered that I had to start all over again with the second hole. I was getting really tired, but fortunately, one of my sons arrived just in time to help me with my project. I have been told that mixing the soil with cement was a very effective method to fill the gaps in the hole after putting the post in place. But as the soil was nearly pure clay, adding the cement made it really hard to handle that mix. If I knew then what I know now, I would have certainly chosen a different method to install the post. In a future video, I will show you the method I use now. It is much better than digging holes. So remember that selecting the right location for your vertical garden will probably be the most important decision you will make to ensure the success of your project. If you have any questions or comment, just write a note in the section below. In the next episode, I will take a break from all this hard work 
and I'll share with you what I saw when I visited the garden of my friend Bob. I think you will really enjoy seeing how Bob uh, has been able to establish and maintain a great food garden for his family. I hope you will join me then.